the Earth's atmosphere has been getting warmer since I was born. And like the rest of us, I didn't take much notice of it for the first 30 years. Indeed, I became a creature of the very industry that was fueling the problem. The fossil fuel industries. I was a lecturer at the Royal School of Mines in London, training the petroleum geologists and engineers of the future. But in the 1980s, I made the connection between the burning of fossil fuels, oil, gas and coal, and the Earth's dangerously rising temperatures. And I decided to do something about it. So, in 1990, I joined Greenpeace UK as their head of science. It was far from a popular move with my former colleagues, but, you know, I wanted to stand up and be counted. If we burn a bare fraction of the remaining quantities of this stuff in the ground, we risk condemning this planet and its citizens to utter ecological holocaust. After a while, it became clear that protest alone wouldn't be enough. Uh, we need solutions, of course, ways of providing energy that don't contribute to climate meltdown. So in 1996, I left Greenpeace and set up a company called Solar Century. I raised the millions of pounds we needed to get started from wealthy people who, like me, were concerned about our future. And we put together a team of the best engineers and marketing people that we could find. It took some time for the embryonic industry we were part of to persuade big financial institutions to invest. They needed a lot of reassurance that the market for solar power was ready to go. But they too came on board and Solar Century and the solar industry we were part of grew exponentially from that point on. In 2020, we sold Solar Century to Norway's state renewable energy company, Statcraft. And with the funds from that sale, I came to the highlands of Scotland to start the next frontier in the fight against climate meltdown and biodiversity collapse, rewilding. Today, thanks to hundreds of investors and counting, large and small, Highlands Rewilding manages three estates across Scotland. We call them outdoor laboratories, where we measure nature's work in order to finally help protect it. Most governments promised in the Global Biodiversity Treaty they signed in 2022 in Montreal to bring in policies that would attract hundreds of billions each year to restore and repair our forests, soils and seas. And in this emerging natural capital market, restoring nature will create profitable carbon and habitat credits, at the same time sustaining and developing local communities. In this arithmetic of life, restoring land becomes effectively the most dependable investment on Earth. Like the early days of Solar Century, the big financial institutions have yet to invest. But they will. They must. And I believe they will do so soon.